The ouster of former President Park Geun-hye has left behind a wide range of issues calling for attention. How will this impact Korea's dynamic with neighboring countries? All this and more coming right up. Hello and welcome to News Inside. I'm An Jang Hyun. Let's welcome back our panelists. Professor Shin sang yeop from Kyung University Graduate School of International Studies is back with us, as is Dr. Pong Young-shik from Yonsei University Institute for North Korean Studies. Welcome back. Former President Park Geun-hye's removal from office has received worldwide attention, and neighboring countries are keeping a close watch on what happens next. There's a look at the reactions from abroad. Swarms of people gathered in front of the Constitutional Court on March 10th. 주문, 피청구인 대통령 박근혜를 파면한다. For the first time in Korea's history, the court dismissed a sitting president, a decision that drew massive global coverage. Major outlets such as CNN reported on the news as it broke, and a flood of analysis followed, with the New York Times saying the decision put an end to months of political turmoil. Japan's Yomiuri Shinbun published a special edition looking at how the impeachment would affect Seoul-Tokyo relations. Other global media outlets described the event as historic, concluding an impeachment saga that stretched over the course of four months. Shortly after the court ruling, neighboring countries commented on the latest developments, emphasizing ties with Korea instead of expressing their views on the decision itself. Uh, we have strong relationships with and we will continue uh, to work with South Korea. They are both an ally and a friend in the region. This is obviously uh, an, an issue that we continue to keep up with on the developments there. The Chinese Foreign Ministry reflected on Seoul-Beijing ties under the Park Geun-hye administration and said it hopes for political stability. Japan emphasized that Korea's administration to come must uphold a bilateral agreement sealed under the Park administration. Now with the impeachment trial behind us, we look at what issues Korea faces, especially when it comes to relations with other countries. There was extensive coverage mm -hmm. and analysis of Park's impeachment by the foreign press. What were some of the stories that caught your attention? Well, when the uh, decision to impeach President Park Geun-hye uh, well, the, was made, the, uh, the, rep I mean, the global mass media, foreign journals and foreign me mass media reported the impeachment very immediately. Particularly, The Guardian, which is based in uh, the UK, they reported the, uh, the details of the presidential election, which is scheduled to be held in the May, uh, with the subtitle, What Next for South Korea? Mm -hmm. And also they reported the situations uh, which the President Park Geun -hye, former President Park Geun -hye, will face. Uh, she should stand in front of the prosecutor's investigation and something like that. So the details of the, uh, uh, the situations after impeachment was very reported uh, very extensively by The Guardian. I think it was quite interesting mm -hmm. for me. There were some interesting and amusing side stories mm -hmm. as well. Right, the photo of Justice Lee Jung Mi, mm, you know, with hair um, right, walking uh -huh. her way to the office on the impeachment day with two pink hair rolls mm -hmm. still locked in her hair, mm. really captured public attention, and it was uh, uh, it also gained the international attention, uh, showing the uh, the image of hardworking professional woman, totally devoted to the mission of what she is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I like to uh, see the this whole impeachment trial and uh, you know, the political scandal uh, from the perspective of uh, feminism and the gender parity, as well as women's empowerment in South Korea. Mm. Uh, President Park geun -hye was elected uh, riding on a high hope, especially among South Korean women, that she would uh, be the first ever woman president. So there will be government initiatives to enhance the status of uh, women and uh, promotion of a gender equality in workplace. Mm. But mm. to be honest, uh, by any reasonable measure, that initiatives uh, have not been materialized as well as promised by uh, former President Park mm -hmm, Geun-hye. Mm -hmm. And the image of President Park Geun-hye uh, as a you know, first ever woman president of South Korea 
was also tarnished uh, throughout the first four years of her tenure as a president. Um, over suspicions, over suspicions of, of right, a scandal. Um, surgical procedures. Surgical mm -hmm. procedures. Even that uh, it was a huge contrast uh, between uh, Justice Lee Jung Mi, uh, not really caring about her looks on the mm. <laughs> one of the most historical days. Yeah, on the day that every Korean every, every will be Korean woman mm -hmm. will be extremely busy in the morning. And another one is that, as AP uh, reported that. Uh, it was a very interesting coincidence that just uh, Lee Jung-mi was the only female member of the constitutional court and she was the one who made a historical verdict mm. to uh, dismiss President Park Geun-hye from the office. So all these uh, uh, different aspects of the political scandals involving Ms. Choi soon shil and former President Park Geun-hye, two women, uh, will enhance the South Korean public's uh, you know, interest in gender equality and empowerment of women. And um, last uh, 8th of March happened to be the International Women's, Women's Day. Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, on Wall Street, there is a five-inch statue of the fearless mm -hmm. girl mm -hmm. you know, uh, facing the iconic statue of Charging Bull, bull yeah. representing the Wall Street. Mm -hmm. So gender in uh, women's empowerment uh, is a sweeping in the United States and I hope that the same trend will continue to rise in South Korea. Hmm. But as one columnist in Dongwa Daily News uh, expressed his worry, this scandal is a huge dent uh, to the activists who want to enhance the uh, gender equality and women's empowerment because former President Park geun as a failed president uh, inevitably leave a very bad taste mm -hmm. and a deep suspicion among South Korean people about women's qualification as top leaders. The new generations of South Korean women have to fight off this negative legacy in the near future. Indeed. Mm -hmm. What also uh, impressed the world was how Korea achieved all this through a peaceful means of protest. Mm -hmm. First of all, the uh, candlelight rally mm -hmm. lasted for 20, 20 weeks. weeks. It started around the, I mean, uh, 29th of October. And the, so after 20 rallies, the estimated number of the uh, participants reached about 16 million, roughly. And then, by the way, uh, there was no uh, violence. Uh, actually, it was a peaceful rallies uh, where the activists and even musicians and has, have entertained a diverse crowd of students, young families, and uh, office workers. So uh, it was really peaceful rally, even though the message was very clear. So uh, it was uh, very surprising for the, uh, not only Koreans, but also the people around the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think these things can be uh, pointed out as one of the uh, contributions which we can get from candlelight rallies this time. Mm -hmm. Not a single injury and participants all cleaning no, up after no themselves riot. as mm. well. Right. Mm. right. And the, the, uh, w observing the, uh, the you know, weekend the rallies for the past uh, uh, few months uh, reminds me of the speech uh, by former U.S. President Barack Obama in Greece in November 2016. And uh, he appreciated uh, people in Greece that quote, 25 centuries ago in the rocky hills of this city, Athens, that a new idea emerged, democratia, which means kratos, meaning the power, the right to rule, mm. comes from demos, the, the people. people. Mm -hmm. So after the emergence and acceptance of this idea of uh, democratia, um, people no longer consider themselves servants, but citizens. Mm citizens who are stewards of their own society and the future. That idea was born in Greece 25 uh, centuries ago, and I believe that the idea was uh, well illustrated and uh, manifested in the week weekend at rallies mm -hmm. in Seoul, South Korea, mm -hmm. in the year of 2016 and uh, 2017. Yes. Because think about all the values that the participants in these candlelight rallies demanded to promote the belief in equality before the law. Nobody should be above the mm -hmm. law. Freedom of speech and assembly and free press to expose the injustice 
and corruption of the system. And independent judiciary, including the constitutional court, as a last you know, decider of the impeachment. And separation of powers to limit the reach of any one branch of government. And the free, free and fair elections. Oh. I, I guess that's the only missing element you know, for uh, the joint effort by Korean citizens to uh, protect the principle of liberal democracy mm, mm. during and in the aftermath of this political yes. turmoil. Mm. Well, now that the impeachment is over and done with, we can turn our attention to other pressing issues at hand. Let's uh, talk about foreign relations first. Now, China was one of the countries closely watching the outcome of the impeachment trial, mm. perhaps in hopes that it would lead to a change in Seoul's THAAD deployment plan? Not really but uh, we can find slight changes uh, in the Chinese government stance. Actually the Chinese government may be uh, toning things down uh, since Park, uh, President, uh, former President Park's impeachment. Uh, the key evidence uh, shows this one is that Chinese government made a decision not to allow the big size demonstration in front of the Korean embassy and in front of Lotte uh, Mart, which is in uh, one of downtown in the uh, uh, Beijing. But uh, we cannot say there are very clear signs of cooling in their retaliatory action against the Korean government after President, former President Park's impeachment. And the another one, in fact, the, uh, the, uh, there would be uh, uh, the meeting between the uh, state, uh, sec state of Secretary uh, uh, of the United States and his counterpart in Chinese counterpart. And the, uh, they will discuss about the summit sub meeting between uh, two countries in the coming April. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this, this can be one of the reasons why Chinese government uh, tones things down uh, in their uh, the, uh, retaliatory action against Korea. And by the way, uh, we have to think about the, uh, the, the some difficulties we have uh, because of deployment of thought. In fact, the Chinese government has taken retaliatory action against only Korea, not the American government, right. Americans. Mm -hmm. Then the cooperation between Korean government and United States government seems to be very important. In this context, I think that we have to discuss about the, uh, how we're going to work together with the United States in response to the retaliatory action of Chinese government. Mm. In fact, shortly after the final ruling was announced, uh, Washington issued a statement emphasizing the importance of uh, continuation of uh, Seoul-Washington right. alliance. Right. Do you think there's something that Washington needs to be worried about? Well, Washington seems to be worried about a sudden shift in um, the foundation of the U.S.-Korea security <coughs> partnership, including you know, the possibility of South Korean government, new government, reversing the decision to install that system in South Korea. Mm -hmm. The that system uh, has not been completely introduced and uh, installed in South Korea. About 20% of the entire battery system has been introduced. introduced. And we're going to have the presidential election on May 9th. Mm. Um, so there's, it is possible for the thought system to be completed by then. But uh, you never know what's going to happen. If we uh, get a more liberal li right, president. Right, mm -hmm. new liberal president. And uh, some candidates from the uh, opposition parties uh, cast, ca has, have cast doubt about the efficacy of thought system. So um, it is a priority for Washington to, you know, have the, uh, the Seoul's commitment mm -hmm. uh, that the THAAD system will be deployed as scheduled. And that kind of uh, anxiety can be read in the statement issued by the State Department of the Trump administration that, quote, uh, uh, we will continue to work with the Prime Minister Huang for the remainder of his tenure as acting president, and we look forward to a productive relationship with whomever mm -hmm. the people mm -hmm. of South Korea elect <clears throat> to be their next president. So uh, there is a double message that we would have uh, utmost respect uh, for whatever decision South Korean citizens will make in terms of electing their next leader, but we hope there won't be any feather ruffled, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, there won't be any. Uh, blind side to the uh, U.S.-Iraq security partnership. Mm. Well, Tokyo has not expressed any formal mm, stance mm. on the impeachment, but the Japanese media had a wide range of things to say. Yes. 
First response from the Japanese mass media, they, for Asahi, and they, uh, I mean, seems to give a high credit on the Korean, the uh, rally uh, culture, so to speak. So they said that shows the maturity of Korean democracy. And they, uh, the, uh, that journal, Japanese journal, asked a question to themselves. Do they have such a kind of mature democracy or not? Uh, in dealing with some uh, school, uh, the money scandal, school scandal this time, well, the Prime Minister Abe seems to have some difficulties. He lost some support from the people uh, very rapidly over the several days. In such a kind of difficulties, the Japanese mass media pointed out that why we are so quiet. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, well, in, in, in we have to uh, the, uh, express their way of thinking to uh, criticize the, uh, I mean the, what the government uh, did, or particularly political leaders did, but they are quiet. Mm -hmm. So they just try to, uh, give, seems to give a high credit on the Korean mature, mature, uh, mature democracy, while they uh, do not have such a kind of mature democracy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although there were some other media outlets uh, that uh, congratulated uh, the Korean people for what they did, mm. but also emphasized the need to adhere to the 2015 agreement on settling yes, the, the wartime point. sexual mm -hmm. slavery issue. Yeah, because yeah. The, uh, when uh, Park geun was a president, I mean, the Korean government kept the stance, uh, I mean, consistent stance in dealing with the, uh, uh, the installment of statue uh, symbolizing sexual slavery during the wartime. But uh, as we know very well, among some strong pres presidential candidates, they have, uh, some of them have different uh, opinions about this issue. So very carefully, Japanese mass media is waiting to see the changes mm -hmm. of Korean government stance dealing with this issue. Yeah. But I think the, uh, basically it will be quite difficult to uh, change our stance dealing with this, uh, this issue, even though uh, I, mean, I mean, regardless of who will be the uh, president of the, uh, our country. So in the meantime, uh, Seoul Tokyo ties remain strained over issues involving shared history, not just uh, wartime sexual slavery. Do you think we'll see a turnaround anytime soon? Well, it's very difficult to predict. On one hand, uh, very adamant and hawkish policy uh, by former President Park Geun-hye has been responsible for the you know, downfall of the bilateral relations mm -hmm. between Seoul and Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And with her eliminating from the office of presidency and under the new leadership, then the Korea-Japan relationship can be you know, recalibrated uh, afresh. That's a positive um, you know, upward potential. On downside that um, South Korea you know, is under pressure to keep its own end of the you know, agreement, the December 2015 mm -hmm. joint declaration by foreign ministers. So um, relocation of the conformal statue should be still a very uh, explosive political hot potato yeah. that may derail the bilateral mm. you know, cooperation between Seoul and Tokyo. Mm. So I see mixed signals. But the bottom line is that because of the uh, clear signs that North Korea's uh, nuclear and missile capability is uh, far exceeding our um, expectation, then security cooperation between South Korea and Japan is uh, indispensable as before. So historical issues, political sensitivity aside, the need for upgrading their security cooperation, including security cooperation with the United States, is uh, undeniably high. So mm. new leadership in South Korea should take uh, due attention to this point that uh, although the overall Seoul-Tokyo relationship may still in a very uh, in a low stage, nadir, but security cooperation is a separate matter that should, take, should be taken uh, seriously in consideration. Japan's ambassador has yet to return to Korea. Right, mm. so there will be some additional negotiation uh, to, that, are, that are needed to take place. Mm -hmm. Well, North Korea was quick to respond to right. the impeachment situation with the state media unleashing a barrage of criticism um, against the Park administration's 
foreign and defense policies. Right. Well, the, according to the Unification Ministry, the North Korea is uh, I mean, focusing on the presidential election in South Korea. In fact, the, uh, uh, the North Korea intends to ignite internal conflicts in, within Korea. And so uh, in this context, the uh, uh, North Korea news outlets uh, are very strongly denouncing each of the present, I mean, former President Park's the, uh, policy toward North Korea. Mm -hmm. So with the presidential election coming up, uh, it, it's not certain which direction uh, Seoul's North Korea policy will take. Um, which direction do you think? But I can tell you one thing, well, based upon what Professor Shin just said, mm -hmm. that North Korean people will not vote for the next president of South no. Korea. It will be South Korean citizens. Right. Why, why do we need to think about our choice of North Korea policy in only binary terms, either or? Why don't we use some combination of both? Hard and right? soft. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, if sunshine policy fails, then, then do we always need to uh, you know, take choose, uh, say, um, moonlight policy? <laughs> why, why don't we combine sunshine and moonlight, right? But, but, uh, because you are the experts, but as far as I know, there, we have one question. That was, how soft, how hard? <laughs> right. So combination of these two things <laughs> seems to be extremely difficult. It becomes more complicated. More complicated. So I think that is the question. Somebody said that we have to take the uh, rather soft side than, rather than hard side. But I mean, based on the, uh, the outcomes, I mean, s same patterns have been repeated as far as I know. So many experts, uh, depending on the situation facing us, suggested some ideas and policies but, you know, uh, it's quite difficult for us to say right. that is the, uh, I mean, the right way, right decision, which can uh, give us the uh, more fruitful outcomes in our policy. Well, we won't know unless we try, and perhaps the incoming government might want to recruit <laughs> Dr. Pong as the new <laughs> no, doctor. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not just uh, uh, advocating one particular policy, mm. but uh, my concern is that you may agree that the uh, last four years, North Korea policy was an auto failure, that does not necessarily mean that going back to sunshine policy is the answer. Because sunshine policy happened many years ago and everything ha has evolved, including North Korea. Mm. So the same old medicine may not work to the new, new symptom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, my concern, another concern is that North Korean military threat is far more than just nuclear weapons. Mm. What about it's a cyber attack capability, mm -hmm. which CIA of the United States ranked number four in the world. And mm -hmm. what about the chemical weapon yeah, capability bio demonstrated yes. in the assassination of Kim Jong-nam. And North Korea does not have to use uh, nuclear weapons or long-range long missiles to destroy and devastate uh, most of South Korean territory because it has formidable artilleries deployed along the DMZ. And what so, about its very unpredictable leader? <laughs> right. So your choice of your choice of policy focus on dealing with no, no, nuclear and missile programs in North Korea is not a separate thing. It's mm. a connected with your policy to deal with other aspects of North Korean threat. Definitely. So you got to have the very multi-dimensional, broader perspective if you want to effectively deal with this threat called North Korea as a whole. Mm. Well, it certainly would be interesting to see what uh, stance the, uh, the next administration takes. In the meantime, the impeachment had been a major uncertainty hanging over the Korean economy mm -hmm. as well. Now, so far, uh, the response from global credit rating agencies and financial markets has been generally positive. Yes, we can summarize the reason uh, why they made such kind of evaluation. The first one is uncer uncertainties. Actually, uncertainties seems to be one of the most serious obstacles for foreign investors. You know, for the, there must be some political uncertainties and economic uncertainties. We cannot think these two things separate from each other. Uh, but the, this time, even though in the uh, serious political turmoil, the Korean government well, very uh, successfully dealt with this case. Uh, that means that by doing so, uh, the Moody's, for example, they said that uncertainty in South Korea is gone. Mm -hmm. Well, the political uncertainty, political has uncertainty been yes. yes. And then even the next uh, administration maybe can improve the situation further 
by changing the uh, current structures, political structures or even economic structures. And the, how about the standard poors? They, they insist that, you know, Korea has a matured democracy. That means that the, uh, this scandal was dealt based on the laws and principles. Well, the laws and principles means what? That means the maturity of the Korean democracy. So the Korea is uh, one of, like the other advanced countries. The Korea has mature democratic system. So based on this system, maybe Korean uh, government can, is ready to accept the investment from the uh, foreign countries. So these two things are the uh, two main reasons why international credit rating agencies gave us quite good score. How about in terms of national security? The election is still a couple of months away and Seoul and Washington military drills are ongoing. Do you think North Korea might try to use this opportunity? Oh, definitely. Why not uh, pass a you know, good opportunity? If you were North Korea, then there, there, this is a great opportunity to exploit the domestic you know, uh, situation uh, by driving wedge between you know, South Korean citizens. Um, it is reported that North Korea uh, may be preparing for another nuclear test mm -hmm. and that we are going to have a presidential election in early May. So unfortunately there might be overlap between North Korea's provocation in major scales and uh, uh, in a political calendar. And uh, many of the former President Park Geun-hye supporters um, you know, rejects the constitutional court's decision uh, to impeach her. So the political situation in South Korea may provide very fertile grounds and uh, uh, useful opportunities for North Korean leaderships to exploit. Um, so it is time for South Korean citizens to prioritize the stability uh, to move to the next stage uh, in favor of solidarity and the stability in the system as opposed to you know, partisan interest and the emotional reactions to the uh, constitutional court's decision. Whoever becomes president, uh, Korea will have a new government right. in May mm -hmm. after the uh, early election. Um, how do you think the government's economic policies will change? Well, when you talk about economic policies, in fact, the uh, well, economic policy consists of three sub-economic policies, trade policy, physical policy and financial policies. Uh, if the USA take the uh, protectionistic trade policy, it will uh, make the uh, uh, very protectionistic trade environments in the world. European Union maybe will return to the protectionistic ends in their trade policy. So we have to prepare for that. I mean, we have to do that, but how we can uh, I mean, the promote our exports that means the, uh, through the physical and financial policies. Mm -hmm. The financial policy means all policies affecting total money in the market. So representative financial ma policy is interest rate policy. Well, the, uh, we have taken the low interest rate policies, but as we know very well, some advanced countries have taken even minus right. the interest rate policy. So maybe there must be some attractions for the Korean government to lower interest rate further. But it, it, we should be very careful. Once we lower the interest rates uh, further, maybe we will face the another the, uh, uh, crisis, maybe inflation. It's oh. Especially because uh, we are now facing a huge uh, household uh, yes, debt, debt problem. Uh, so because of that, well, we have some limits in using the uh, financial policies. But anyway, well, if the USA government, I mean, Federal Reserve, increase the interest rate, we have to think about how much we can lower interest rate further. Mm. But anyway, the uh, financial policy can be a, a few remaining uh, policies available to the Korean government. And last one is physical policy. Surprisingly, uh, uh, over the last two months, the Korean government uh, the, uh, get uh, more the tax than our I mean, expectation. Well, physical policy means all policies the affecting government spendings and government income. Mm -hmm. So the taxation policy is a representative physical policy. So I mean, we got I mean, government got more money uh, from the people from the industries. 
Well, so maybe Korean government should have to consider use the physical policy and financial policy to promote the exports at the same time to promote a depressed domestic economy. So, I mean, the remaining task for the Korean government is what kind of combination of these three economic policies the Korean government will make. But definitely financial policy will be the first choice taken by the Korean government, I think. But there's a still um, you know, elephant in the room that should be you know, uh, tackled, which is the, uh, the reform of the labor market. Mm -hmm. That was a hot issue uh, a couple of years ago, right. and we have a series of discussions here, News Insight. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we assume that more you know, progress uh, uh, leadership will be winning uh, the presidential election, then do we expect that uh, it's a bygone conclusion that there won't be any you know, reform oh, of the labor market? That's a very important question, in fact. The, uh, well, the, uh, mm, on the, the, uh, the previous government, uh, the, they submit several labor bills to the I mean, Congress. Uh, any one of them uh, or not. The national <laughs> right. We but, haven't talked about them for the last six months. <laughs> yeah. So I think, the, practically speaking, it's gone. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, so that will be one of the, well, the hot potato for the Korean economy because laborers want to take, get the uh, larger piece of cake than they had. Uh, that means that how the government and the, how the employers will persuade the employees uh, I mean, to share the common goals in our economy. I think that will be one of the most challengeable tasks for the Korean government and employers. So we can pretty much assume that the policies pursued by the Park administration are pretty much scrapped. Scrap, yes. Mm. So what issues are we facing in, in terms of foreign relations and national security? Well, multiple, All the obvious ones we multiple. mentioned. Yeah. Um, I would point out that the, South Korea, the new leadership in South Korea needs to, uh, as soon as possible, restore credibility of South Korea. Mm. Because South Korea's position on some sensitive but important issues uh, with other countries uh, have been really tangled. Um, so the previous administration uh, has not been hands-on, the issues. Uh, that are connected with other issues. For instance, South Korean government's decision to agree on the settlement of the comfort women mm -hmm. st uh, statue with the Abe administration of Japan. Um, without settling the issue, then it'll be very difficult for the new government of South Korea to uh, make progress on the front of the security cooperation with Japan. Meanwhile, without you ameliorate the tension between Beijing and Seoul on the deployment of that system, then trade uh, relations mm -hmm. between China and South Korea will not be uh, improved. So one issue cannot be settled or resolved without making progress uh, with other issues. So new leadership in South Korea will be in, unfortunately, a very difficult position yeah. to begin to untangle all these complicated issues affecting each other. Uniting the deeply divided public will be another huge challenge for the incoming government. How can this be done? Well, it is very important, but it is not easy, I think. Well, at the moment, um, I think uh, the political leaders, particularly the uh, presidential election candidates coming from uh, various political parties, share their idea. They have to put the first priorities on the uh, national unification, uh, not on their political, personal political interest or political parties' interests. So their contribution, their role, seem to be very important at the moment, uh, including President Park Geun-hye. Even though I know that she has something to say about uh, her, her uh, herself, but I think uh, because she was the president and she is certainly one of the political leaders in Korea she should make every effort to persuade her supporters to uh, the, uh, participate in efforts to accomplish national unification. Why? Without such a kind of the national unification, we will lose golden time in dealing with many uh, var various issues facing us, economy and politics, 
The Korea exists for a long time, you know. So the, uh, um, I think the, we should not miss the golden time in dealing with those kind of issues. To do that, the old leaders should have to make every effort to accomplish national unification. What's your prescription, Dr. Wong? Well, I'm not too worried about the you know, fu immediate future of South Korean society because uh, um, South Korean society has uh, very clearly demonstrated maturity and strength. Um, we tend to identify silence with stability and harmony, but during the Nazi Germany, there is a silence, but does that silence does not mean the p maturity of the politics or the social cohesion um, or uh, popular support for the regime uh, for the good reasons. So we should not equate the uh, silence uh, with uh, political stability or the national unity. Maybe cantankerous and uh, uh, chaotic aspects of uh, um, you know, politics may be a sign of healthy and functioning democracy. Um, so I wouldn't disregard or discount the maturity of South Korean democracy, and I, you know, I, I, I think I'll be sleeping well <laughs> without worrying about. Well, yeah, you know, I remember you society. once said um, Korea has always been <laughs> and, divided. Uh, the public. Think, think about uh, think about how things are uh, been played for the past uh, four months. It has been uh, all these difficult issues have been decided by rule of law mm -hmm. and um, according to the principle of constitutional democracy. Uh, so, if uh, there is somebody who wants to take partisan or individual interest by challenging or dismissing constitution that was upheld by the decision of the constitutional court, then it will only highlight their shortcomings and their problems in dismissing the very status of constitution, which should be the very foundation of South Korea. Which unfortunately is happening right now among uh, uh, for right. President Park supporters. Right, but uh, that happening will only highlight the difference between those who say the Constitu Constitution should uh, deserve the highest respect and those who uh, argue that Constitution is upheld only conditionally. But if I take a one step further, well, yes, uh, but the many people got a huge stress because of the uh, political turmoil we had experienced over the last five months. Mm -hmm. I know many people who uh, seem to uh, be depressed or uh, lose their uh, motives or, or, or some desire to do something. You know, they just sit in idols in some sense. Um, so they do not know what they do, I mean, at the moment. So I think the, uh, uh, the leaders should have to show them the way we are going to take. I think in this context, in this context, the role and the contribution of the political leaders and economic leaders seems to be very important for all Koreans at the moment. Well, let's wrap it up here. Um, Professor Shin, your final thoughts of the week? Uh, yes, I think uh, uh, I, I want to give uh, this uh, old saying to all Koreans. Uh, failure is a stepping stone to success. Well, the impeachment of the present, former President Park geun can be understood as a huge failure uh, in Korea or even for us. But I think, no, we, we should have to think of uh, the impeachment of the President Park geun as a new beginning. So I want to give this old saying, I mean, to, to all Koreans, failure is a stepping stone to success. Dr. Pong? I'd like to second Professor Shin's uh, wise remark uh, by highlighting that uh, is young women in South Korea, especially young women in South Korea, must not engage in self-defeating uh, thinking. Yes, uh, former President Park geun uh, will be recorded in history book as a failed first woman president in South Korea, but that does not mean that uh, women's empowerment and gender equality uh, should be disregarded or dismissed as an uh, issue uh, they are not that important or impossible to achieve. Because what triggered the candlelight you know, demonstration that led to impeachment of uh, President Park was the demonstration by Iwam Women's University students mm -hmm. protesting the admission of Ms. Jung Yura uh, through the back door because of pressure from the you know, uh, close confidence of President Park geun -hye. Without their collective action, we, South Korean citizens, 
might not have achieved the impeachment of President Park Geun Hye. Well, thank you too very much for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thank you. That's all for this edition of News Inside. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more next week.